welcome to this episode of Danny's Meteorology Sessions. Hey guys, it is Danny. Sorry I'm just doing this. I just forgot to really do my hair properly. Okay guys, so welcome to Danny's Meteorology Sessions. And so in this first video, what are we going to be doing? You might be wondering, but you probably know from the topic anyway. We are going to be, well, I will be answering the most asked questions about meteorology or weather on a whole. So guys, stay tuned for that. But before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't and tap the bell so you know every time when I post a new video. Okay guys, so before I go into all these questions, which I actually wrote down a few of them, in a book that I have right here. It's actually my physics book. Anyways, so first of all, I want you guys to know a bit about me if you don't already because I like being here on YouTube to have a very friendly and interactive community. Oh, it's not just about, okay, I'm giving you information about what's going on in the tropics and then, oh, that's it. I don't interact with you guys. I don't answer your questions. I always try to whenever I can because I love making persons know a lot about what's going on in the Earth's atmosphere. And if you haven't done so already, guys, you can follow my weather Instagram at WeatherGirlDanny. Okay, guys, so I am 16 years old. I was born on the 15th of May, 2004. And I'm currently a high schooler and I hope to become a meteorologist or be in that field in the future for my, um, my future job eventually. So being a meteorologist is really a career goal for me right now. So, oh and also guys, I'm from the beautiful island of Jamaica. Yeah, so very lovely sunshine here. Yeah, so let's get into the questions. Okay, so question number one. How does a cloud fill with water? So actually the word fill is not really the appropriate word right there, but what happens is with the water cycle. So with the water cycle, there are three main processes which a lot of persons know, which are evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. So let's talk about the first step which is evaporation and this is where the sun heats different sources of water such as rivers, ponds, lakes, even some puddles or even if you were, for example, you were having a smoothie and you spilled it like bummer, it is, you realize that it's going to dry up. That is because of evaporation. The sun is heating the different water bodies and eventually it is going to be rising because of course it's eventually going to be turned into vapor which is warm air and warm air rises so it's going to be rising in the atmosphere and as it goes up 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 what's going to happen it's going to cool because as we increase in height or altitude it gets cooler so that is why you might go hike at a specific mountain range and it is so cold and you might be wondering why and it is because there are less layers of your life, the different layers of the atmosphere and of course you are further away from the ground. Areas that are well at ground level mainly are usually experiencing warmer temperatures than those in hilly areas because dust is of course on the ground so it traps heat when the sunlight rays hit the surface of the earth. Okay. <laughs> So what happens is that as the warm air rises, as it vaporizes, it is going to cool and that is going to result in it forming into clouds because clouds are really made up of dust particles and water molecules. So after that point, it's going to continue getting saturated with more of these particles which is eventually going to result in being saturated, a saturated cloud. Those dark clouds that you see when it rains heavily, those are saturated clouds. And then when there is that release, that is called precipitation. And it doesn't have to be water which is rain, it can also be snow, hail or sleet. So that is how you get the clouds to really um, fill up as a lot of persons would say. But what happens is that if there is a lot of condensation taking place, eventually resulting in the cloud getting saturated. So I hope that you guys understand that question. Next question is, can it rain fish? Personally, I have never seen fish falling from the sky. Next question, 
Why are meteorologists wrong all the time? No one is perfect and remember guys, the weather changes constantly. The weather is always changing and it's not like we are really like fortune tellers to say, okay, I have a vision and this is what I see. No. What happens is that based on weather patterns, it is possible for us to predict what might happen but again, it is never ever guaranteed because um, the weather can sneak up on us sometimes, especially in relation to tropical cyclones. They always tend to sneak up on us, guys. Alright, guys, so next question is Do you believe in climate change? Well, yes and no, but I would be more on the yes side because. Based on what I've seen, that is, since I was born, I was born in 2004, I've seen a dramatic change in terms of um, temperature and all of that. One time, things were pretty, um, especially, I'm talking about here in Jamaica specifically, it was a lot cooler and all of that, and of course now it is very, very warm in some areas, like, the temperature is getting warmer and warmer. And also, the reason I would say no is because that especially persons tend to associate tropical cyclones a lot with climate change. And in the past, there were very deadly hurricanes like how we're having some of them now. It's just that they're more common now. And that could be fueled by the rising of the um, ocean temperatures. So ocean temperatures are getting warmer and that is a very significant factor that plays a huge role in a tropical cyclone developing. So that is the reason we are having so many tropical cyclones nowadays. But also remember we have the ENSO, which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. We have the El Nino, which results in less tropical activity during the season, and the La Nina, which is happening here in 2020. We're having a hyperactive season, and it's easier for these storms to develop once the conditions are right. So that question is really a yes and a no for me, because even back in, let's use Hurricane Allen from 1980, I believe it was. So Allen had sustained winds of 190 miles per hour, and back then person to think that's crazy, that's, how can a tropical cyclone be so strong? So that was 1980, and here in 2020, we've had Hurricane Iota, which was a Cat 5 winds of 160 miles per hour. It's just that Cat 5s aren't very, very common back, weren't as common as they are now. So, I would say yes to that question, but I'm kind of stuck in the middle at the moment. Alright guys, next question. What is climate? So climate is the average weather conditions of a particular area. So let's say, for example, here in Jamaica, let's use where I live. So I live in the western portion of the island. So it's usually very sunny. Um, we have our rainy season, which are in like May and September. Those time periods we get a lot of rainfall. And uh, you know, it's usually warm here. We don't get snow here and we don't get hail or anything like that. So you can say that the climate here is a, is a very sunny and warm climate because we don't have very harsh weather conditions except for if a tropical cyclone is to affect a particular area. Alright guys, so, oh and one thing I should make mention of is that climate is the average weather conditions for at least about 30 years in a specific area. Next question. What is the eye of a hurricane? So the eye of a hurricane is the center of it really and it is where we have the strong winds um, around the eye called the eye wall rotating. So the eye wall rotates around the eye. So the eye is really the center of the hurricane and when you have that beautiful symmetrical tropical cyclone that is a very healthy hurricane and most of our major hurricanes looked um, that way they look so symmetrical they look so healthy so that's really what the eye is the center of a hurricane and remember tropical storms on the other hand they don't have an eye we just call it the center of it the low pressure center but it becomes an eye when the system acquires hurricane status which is winds above um, 74 miles per hour or 74 miles per hour and above. 
Next question is, are hurricanes getting worse? So this is really a question that's going to tie into what I was saying about climate change and all of that. So let's just say that once the right conditions set in during a La Nina season, you can expect some very hyperactive hurricanes. But of course, guys, um, it is believed that things are getting worse in terms of the climate, the earth is warming and you know things are definitely changing so with the warmer ocean temperatures of course we're going to have more intense tropical cyclones in the future if this trend is going to be continuing over the next couple of years we can expect some deadly hurricanes and that is why i'm here to keep you informed so if you haven't done so already please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell Next question, what causes rainbows? So rainbows are a treat for the eye. Every time after a phrase and I see rainbow, I will just be outside just staring at it until it fades away. So what happens is that, um, first of all, let's understand this. So the sun reflects white light to the earth. And so that white light contains all the colors. So it contains red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So those colors are all contained in that white light. What happens is that when white light is bent through a glass prism, it breaks down into all these separate colors. And so in the case of a rainbow now, the rain drops from, because usually we see rainbows after a thunderstorm, or so you would tend to see it. So the ice crystals up there in the atmosphere, or the raindrops, act as tiny prisms and they separate that white light into its separate colors resulting in a spectacular view of a rainbow and this is also the reason we have halos as well you see those rainbow halos around the sun um, those are caused by cirrus clouds they are high clouds and they contain tiny ice crystals which act as prisms to break down the white light the sun is emitting into its separate colors Okay guys, so final question, and this question is, what causes the seasons? So, this is caused by the Earth revolving around the Sun, because we know that a year happens when the Sun makes a complete, um, it completely revolves around the Sun. So what happens is that while it is revolving around the Sun, it is actually tilting as well. So we have the different seasons, we have the spring being from March 21st to June 21st and that is the spring. The summer is from the 21st of June to September 23rd. We have autumn being from September 23rd to December 22nd and winter being from December 22nd to March 21st. So while the earth is going to be rotating around the sun, it simply results in, because sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's further away, and then it also tilts. So that is going to result in different temperatures, which are going to influence the different seasons, guys. And so guys, that is it. So I just answered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 questions, um, 9 of the common questions asked about meteorology or any sorts of weather phenomenon. And so guys, that is it for this first meteorology session and if you have any more questions that you would like me to answer, please leave it in the comments down below and I will be sure to respond as soon as possible guys. And so guys, more meteorology sessions are going to be coming up and you can also leave your ideas for what you'd like to see me do next in the comments as well. So guys, I hope that you learned something new and I hope that you all have a wonderful day and always be with the wise.